Welcome back. It's the final week in our series on prayer, and it's been a great journey so far as we've explored the great reasons to pray. Let's review some of those reasons. Prayer is a conversation with God that can happen anytime, anywhere. Prayer reminds us of who God is. Prayer helps us deal with anxious thoughts, and prayer gives us the opportunity for the fresh start of forgiveness. And prayer gives us the chance to hear God's voice. The Bible tells us God answers our prayer and that prayer is an important link to God. It's important that we pray. Prayer is also a way for us to express worship to God. Worship is showing God we love Him because He is the most important of all. Let's worship God by taking a moment to think about all of the wonderful things we know about God. Another way to worship God is showing love towards other people. I want you to think of a time when you helped someone or showed kindness to someone. Recently, I had a neighbor who had surgery and she couldn't take care of her family and have food on the table. So we just made a special meal at our house and brought it over them to help. There are so many people who need our help. We can do many things to help them, like giving food and clothing to the poor or encouraging someone who's feeling low or standing up for someone who's being bullied. It's important to keep doing those things. Those are important ways to share Jesus with others and to help other people. If you're already doing some of those things, don't stop. As Jesus followers, we're called to do those things and many more. We've talked a lot about the benefits of prayer and how it helps us in our own little world, but did you know that prayer can also benefit others? Did you know that our prayers for others make a real difference? In fact, prayer is one of the most powerful ways to make a difference in others' lives. James chapter 5, 16 says, Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has a great power as it is working. What do you think it means when it says that the prayer of a righteous person has a great power as it is working? When we pray for others, God hears our prayer. In the Old Testament, Moses led God's people away from Egypt out of slavery. God wanted his people to worship him only, and he wanted them to learn about the best way to be close to him. He did this by bringing Moses to the top of Mount Sinai to hear what God expected from the nation of Israel. God wrote his expectations on two stone tablets, not the electric kind. We call those expectations the Ten Commandments. So Moses finished talking with God and came back down the mountain. Guess what happened while he was gone? Do you know? God's people became bored and restless, and they were losing their faith in their leader Moses and in God. They asked Moses' brother Aaron to melt down all the gold they could find in the camp and to build them an idol to worship. Aaron listened to them and did what they asked. Now remember, God is everywhere all the time. So while God was talking to Moses, he also saw his people worshiping a ginormous statue of a calf made out of gold. How do you think Moses and God felt about this? Yeah, they were angry. Exodus 32, 9 through 10 says, And the Lord said to Moses, I've seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore let me alone, that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, in order that I may make a great nation of you. Moses could have said, sounds good to me, I'd love to be a great nation, but he didn't. Instead, he had a conversation with God. He reminded God of all God had done to save his people. He told God that he remembered everything God had promised them. God decided to do something different because of Moses' conversation with him. That's right, God changed his mind about destroying his people. Now there were still consequences for their terrible choices, but Moses' conversation with God made a difference. Remember back in week one of this series, we said prayer is a conversation with God that can happen anytime and anywhere? Moses had a conversation with God on a mountain that changed the course of history for these people. They weren't destroyed. I'd like to share with you a modern day example of how prayer for others can make a difference. There's been a time for me that I really struggled with not getting along with someone. And I prayed and asked God to change the situation and make it better. But really, he worked in my heart to change how I felt toward that person. And he gave me patience and love toward that person instead of feeling frustrated. 1 Timothy 2.1 outlines something we can all do. 
First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people. Prayer is an awesome and powerful way to take care of others. Who's someone you could pray for right now? Not only can we pray anytime, anywhere, but we can also pray for anyone. I have one last example to share with you from the New Testament in Acts 12. This person, Peter, was in an impossible situation. He'd been imprisoned because King Herod was upset by people who were Christians. He didn't want them telling others about Jesus and upsetting his power. You may remember the story about someone else who was in prison for telling people about Jesus. Do you remember who it was? That's right, Paul. In that story, which takes place later in the book of Acts in chapter 16, there's an earthquake and the chains fall off Paul and Silas. It's a little confusing to hear two stories about prison that are just a little different. So I wanted to make sure you understood that this is a different story with different characters. This is the story of Peter in prison for loving Jesus and telling others about him. When Herod saw how much this pleased the Jewish people, he also arrested Peter. This took place during the Passover celebration. Then he imprisoned him, placing him under the guard of four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring Peter out for public trial after the Passover. But while Peter was in prison, the church prayed very earnestly for him. And the night before Peter was to be placed on trial, he was asleep, fastened with two chains between two soldiers. Others stood guard at the prison gate. And suddenly there was a bright light in the cell, and an angel of the Lord stood before Peter. The angel struck him on the side to awaken him and said, Quick, get up! And the chains fell off his wrist. And the angel said to him, Get dressed and put on your sandals. And he did. Now put on your coat and follow me, the angel ordered. So Peter left the cell following the angel. But all the time he thought it was a vision. He didn't realize it was actually happening. They passed the first and the second guard posts and came to the iron gate leading to the city. And this opened for them all by itself. So they passed through and started walking down the street. And then the angel suddenly left him. Peter finally came to his senses. It is really true, he said. The Lord has sent his angel and saved me from Herod and from what the Jewish leaders had planned to do to me. When he realized this, he went to the home of Mary, the mother of John Mark, where many were gathered for prayer. He knocked at the door in the gate, and the servant came, named Rhoda came to open it. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed that instead of running, opening the door, she ran back and told everybody, Peter's standing at the door. You're out of your mind, they said. When she insisted, they decided it must be his angel. Meanwhile, Peter continued knocking, and when they finally opened the door and saw him, they were amazed. He motioned for them to quiet down and told them how the Lord had led him out of prison. Tell James and the other brothers what happened, he said, and then he went to another place. At dawn, there was a great commotion among the soldiers about what had happened to Peter. Herod Agrippa ordered a thorough search for him, and when he couldn't be found, Herod interrogated the guards and sent sentenced them to death. Afterward, Herod left Judea to stay in Caesarea for a while. What a great story. The prayer of those in the church led Peter being freed from prison. What an awesome surprise to all of them. That day, Peter and his friends learned that prayer for others has powerful results. Why do you think God wants us to pray for others? In John 3.16, we see the answer. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. God loves all the people of the world. And God sent his son not just for a few of the people, but for all of the people. God loves people and he wants us to love and care for people too. If we become God's children by accepting his gift of grace, then we should love and serve all the people because God created and loves all the people. Praying for people is one way to show love for them. The bottom line is that praying for others makes a difference. And I want to encourage you to pray for someone else this week. Let's end today worshiping God in prayer and remembering worship is showing God we love him because he is the most important of all. Let's pray. Father God, 
Thank you for hearing our prayers, for meeting with us and having a conversation with us. Thank you for reminding us how important it is for us to pray for others and that you hear our prayers and listen to what's on our hearts. God, please help us to remember to pray for others in our lives, our friends, our families, and even people we don't get along with as we go about our week. Amen. Thanks for joining me on this prayer journey as we have learned all the different ways we can worship God through prayer. See you next week. Bye.